This is the Opus Mega 2 power station, and I've been testing this for a little over a month or so, and I have identified things that I like about it and I dislike about it, and I'm gonna share that with you throughout this video. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into the review because I'm gonna talk about all this stuff that you see on the front, the ports on the side, as we go through the review in general, I'll be discussing those. So there's really no sense in me doing that right now and then talking about it again later. So let's go ahead and jump right to it. And I'll start off with the overall design because that's a definite win for me. And the first thing I wanna do is get the weight. 48.8 pounds. And the dimensions are roughly 18 by 12 and a half by 10 and a half. So after two hours and 22 minutes, we've completed a test at 1.836 kilowatt hours of capacity. So that's 1,836 watt hours. From other power stations that I've tested, we've ranged anywhere from 85 to 90%. There has been one that went over 90%, but 90% is a really good efficiency rating on these power inverters at the current time. So at 90%, I'm happy with the Opus Mega 2. I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then I'm gonna charge it by only using the AC input only to see how long this unit takes to charge from zero to 100% by only the AC. Then once we're complete with that, I'll do another capacity test on the DC side, and then we'll uh, charge it back up using solar and the AC and see how fast this thing actually does charge. I thought it would be a good idea to get the sound level meter out and get a decibel reading on how loud this unit is at full charge. So right now we have about 1600 watts going in. That's the maximum that it can intake from the AC side. And let's see what the actual reading is on the sound level meter. And it's not too bad at 51 decibels. And I have the sound level meter up here on top, very close to these two fans that are pulling air in. And then we have two fans over here that are pulling air out. So I thought this would be a good spot to put that. Most people even try to put that three to five feet away from the unit to get them a sound. But I wanna get as close as possible to the fans in case you have to have as close to you maybe in a camping scenario. And it took a total of an hour and 30 minutes to charge this from zero to 100%. And that's not bad when you're considering the total watt hours is 2,048 watt hours of capacity. So it charges up really quickly. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is once you reach around 80%, it starts to slow the charge from around at 1600, goes down around 1200. And then as you get to 98%, it starts to slow it down even a little bit more, but it doesn't go much lower than 750 uh, to 850, even at 98 to 100%. So it does charge rather fast for a power station with that capacity. And as promised, now we're gonna do a DC discharge capacity test and this is the screen that we'll be using throughout this test. And our capacity is gonna be right here at the bottom. And I'm not expecting for the DC output to be as much capacity as the AC output. And the industry, what we're seeing right now is around 80 to 85%. Where on the AC side, we've seen 85 to 90%. So let's see what the Opus Mega 2 does on the discharge from the DC side. And our discharge rating is gonna be set at 9.80 amps. And this is one of those tests that takes a lot of time to complete. This one's gonna take roughly, probably 10 to 12 hours to complete. But we wanna find out what the efficiency of the DC output is, just as important as the AC output efficiency. And on this test, we got the DC capacity at 1626.7 watt hours, and that puts us close to 80%. And something that's very important is that you do not go over that 150 volts when you're connecting your solar. So I have four solar panels connected and I always check the voltage before plugging it in. And we have 148.3 volts. So it puts us right at the 150 volts.
And with the right configuration, the Mega 2 could charge from 0% to 100% in around 30 minutes. So you just wanna make sure that when you're connecting your solar panels together, that we don't go over the 150 uh, volts or 15 amps. So your range is between 12 and 150 volts and a maximum of 15 amps. And then for my next test, I'm gonna test the inverter. So we wanna see if the 2500 watts is true to what it says, that it can handle 2500 watts for an extended period of time. And then we also wanna test the spike surge and see if this thing will actually shut down and protect itself when we put too much of a load on it. And these are my three appliances of choice because they are large consumers of electricity. These are heat guns and this is a, a little space heater. They all use roughly around 1200 to 1500 watts a piece uh, when they're turned on their maximum setting. So let's turn the AC on. We'll turn this off for right now. Let's turn the heat gun on. Let's turn this heat gun on. We're up to 14, 1500 watts. Let's turn this one all the way up. Now we're at 2600 watts. Let's turn. So we overloaded it. I got it up to 2800 watts. Now we'll just reset it by turning off the plugs and then turning the plugs back on. I'm gonna confirm that the Mega 2 does have the output of 2500 watts and it can do that for an extended amount of time. I've been running this for a little while. We're down to 77% and it's running anywhere from 2200 to 2500 watts continuously with no problem. And to test the UPS function, I'm using these very sensitive lights. So anytime that we unplug something, I've never had these not do a flicker of some sort. Extremely fast, but I can always see something with those lights. So I like using those to test this out. So um, with no extra load, we're only using 28 watts to run those three bulbs. We're not using the heater yet because in some scenarios, when I add a larger load to an inverter, it causes them to have a longer flicker. So let's test it with just the lights on. So you can see it's extremely fast flicker. That's actually really good. Um, now we'll turn the heater on to its highest setting and we're gonna be pushing around 17, 1800 watts. Right now we're at 1400 watts. So let's let everything kind of settle out. All right, 1200 watts. We've got the inverter pulling power in, the light on. It's still extremely fast. So really having it under a load didn't make any difference versus not being under a load. So let's turn this off and then pull that plug, it's almost identical. So the transfer was just as fast with a load or without a load. And if you're not aware, the Mega 2 is expandable up to 10,240 watt hours. And I just so happen to have a battery that can expand this unit from 2,048 watts to 4,096 watts by just adding in one battery. So each one of these batteries are 2,048 watts, and you can add four additional batteries with the battery that's included with the power station itself, giving you a total of that 10,240 watts. You'll need to connect your inverter to your battery, and you've just doubled your capacity. And I really like the feature that you can expand the capacity of the Mega 2. Now here's one thing that I do not like about the expandable battery, and it's just this little flap, this door protector. I wish this was two pieces rather than one, because if you only have one battery and you plug this in, you can't close this to protect that bottom ports. It has to stay open because that is one solid piece. So that needs to be two pieces. Now let's talk about the plugs on the front of the Mega 2. We'll start with the Anderson plug right here because you do not want to confuse this with the Anderson plug that's on the input side. This is for the solar connection when you hook up your solar array. Do not hook it here because you'll burn up your unit. 
Then we have two 100 uh, USB-C ports and four QC3 ports. And here's the button to turn those on and off. You have your AC button that turns this bar on. And then I'll turn that off. And then we have the cigarette lighter and your barrel ports here. And that turns that on. Now we'll talk about this down here. And we have four 20 amp plugs and a 30 amp RV connection. So this is recreational vehicle use only. Now I do wanna talk about these four plugs here real quick. I reached out to the company and let them know that these were upside down. And they have notified me and let me know that in the new production, everything will be flipped correctly. Because if we look in the standard US home, that ground is at the bottom. Here, it's at the top. Now, it doesn't affect the functionality of this. It's just the way things are designed is designed with the ground to be at the bottom. So we'll even take a device like this one. You'll see that the ground's at the bottom, right? But if I want to plug it into this, now I would have to flip that upside down and my screen is upside down. So I can't plug this in here. And you probably had noticed when I did my capacity test that I had to put this on an extension cord rather than plugging it directly in here. So I had to put an extension cord around and bring it up here. That's because these plugs were upside down. But they said they have corrected that problem. And going forward, they'll put the ground at the bottom like it should be. Now let's talk about the cords you get with the Mega 2. You'll get your power cord, which does have a weird connection port um, on the end of that cord. So it's probably only gonna be for that power station. You'll get an extension cable for your Anderson connection. So this can work on your output or your input. And this is for your solar connection for your Anderson plug. This should only be used on your input. Something I'll probably never use, but you may. Anderson to cigarette lighter. And then this cord, uh, some type of barrel connection and an Anderson connection.